Hi my lovelies and welcome back to chapter two of the Cherry Bakewell Cow. So I have a bit of an update for you for anybody following the cow. Um, I have made the changes to the actual written blog. I made a bit of a boo-boo. I have a confession. Yes, I made a boo-boo. And the boo-boo is on the last row of chapter one, I added into the corners two double crochets and two chains and two double crochets. When in fact, it's actually one double crochet, chain three and one double crochet. So it's all updated now. So all is well. I realised that after videoing areas of content to then find that things were not lining up as they should as per my notes because I was trying to do everything and as I always tell you um, to remain calm and relaxed and in that moment I decided that I was going to frog back all of my rows every single one I'd worked all the way up to the below pattern and to come back to the very beginning so here I am at the very beginning of chapter two. <laughs> so, there is my row 14. <laughs> I frogged it back. I hope you haven't had too many issues. So before you start chapter two, remember, frog back row 14 and redo those corners. Thank you very much. Um, and I hope you can forgive me. So I'm going to work now, half treble. So I've done most of my rows and I'm going to work into this row here. I've shut my window because not only did, honestly, not only did that happen, I had car alarms, I had quad bikes, I had children playing in the street. It was bank holiday after all. And um, yeah, everybody decided to make a lot of noise. So I thought, well, and then on top of that, I didn't like my microphone and how it sounded. So anybody watching any previous videos, I do apologise because now I have changed my microphone, I have upgraded it, and I feel so much better. So here we are. Anyway, now my rant is over, I shall continue with my half trebles into my into the previous row of 14, the dreaded 14. It has wrapped my brain all day trying to figure out what I've done wrong, and then after scouring my blanket, I then discovered what I'd done. So, when in doubt, frog it. That's my answer. And the only way to humour the day that I've had today is just go with it. Just go with it. Just ignore all the other crap. Be happy. So, I'm not going to speed this up. You're just going to get me rumbling because this is exactly how I work. I really don't care. <laughs> I hope. I shall make these into bite-sized videos as well rather than the 35-minute long one that I did. So hopefully then that way we can segment it throughout the blog and you can pick up on each row as it goes and know that you don't have to keep stopping and starting. Unless you like the 35 minute rambling of me. So I am working in mauve currently in the alternative colourway. Um, this is more of the Barbie colourway. Um, the mauve is actually the frost blue, so if you are working in this section, let me grab my blanket, which I've put on the other side of the room. Um, right, so where are we? Hold the phone. So here we are. This is the bit I'm working on. This was the dreaded row 14. This is the trebles that I'm going to be working on. So. The, I'm sorry, the trebles, the half trebles. If you notice, I haven't gone into the stitch ends. I've actually gone into the space between the posts. So that's what we're going to be doing. And I will show you that. So let me get to the end of this row. And then we can begin the other section. And hopefully everything sounds amazing. So I hope you've had a lovely day. Whatever day it is you've decided to watch this on. Um... You can choose all, all one of the seven that we have. Okay, I am working fast because I am trying to get to the end of the row and I do apologise. So it is a half treble I'm working in. Three loops, yarn over, go through all three. Yarn over. If you notice, I'm locking that hook down. So locked, wool can't go anywhere. Engaged and going through the stitch head. So you have two stitches there, 
and then working up right Peeking got my oh the sun is right in my eyes Ugh. And again, for anybody that's picking up on this video and is wondering what on earth is going on, this is to do with a free blog that we have, um, sorry, a free pattern on our blog that you can join. And this is chapter two. I would say week two, but we're having two weeks in between um, each chapter, purely because I know that you all need a little bit more time to get things done and I don't want you to be rushing if you're joining the cow so there we go it looks so much better oh. happy 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 right so now we're going to work on the next row so on this row in particular let me go back to my notes which I've turned around and I've got to find where I was So I am on row 15, which is the half treble, and we're going to work into between the space. There are four rows of this, okay? Lovely jubbly. Right, I'm going to go and work straight into this area here. Can you see that? So that's my chain up there that acted as my um, fake treble. So there's actually half, that's a fake half treble there. There you go. We're working between there and we are going to create a standing stitch so you may have noticed I, I've pulled my wool through I now have two loops on my hook pick up your yarn take it through like so go through that, that first loop that one there or the bottom loop pick up your yarn again and come through and then go through as if you've created another double crochet so every time that you decide to go through that bottom loop, finish it off as if it's a double crochet. Can you see how, how good that looks? It's nice and substantial and it allows you then to work into it. But because we're only working half trebles, I can take that back down. Just making sure that it is what I need it to be. Just go back through that loop there. I just want to make sure I've done it correctly. Oh no, there's three. I don't want the three. No, I was right. <laughs> just double checking. See, just making, I'm just testing you. That's what I'm doing. You're probably watching it and thinking, no, 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 you already did it. So I'm just testing you. So half treble, another half treble, and one, two on the chains. Sorry, I'm being blinded by the sun. It's just typical, it's always something. And then we're going to work in between the spaces. So, Let's just look at this work. So if you've done any of our courses, um, I talk a lot about the architecture of your stitching. I'm just going to shift my blind down because I'm going to end up having a migraine. Oh, careful. Sorry, making everything all over. Right, let's just shut that down. Right, that's much better. And I've just knocked my, uh, what's it? So, sorry about that. So, looking at this work and looking at your stitch placement, let's just take a moment to gather our thoughts and to understand what it is I'm talking about when I say architecture. So I'm going to grab another hook because I don't want to let that one go. So, your stitch is made up. Let's get in there nice and close. Your stitch is made up of a post and a stitch head. Depending on the stitch that you make, it depends on how many loops there are. Because we're using a half treble, those loops are closed down together. So in other words, if you were working the treble, you'd see two and two. So let's see if we've got some trebles here that I can use as my... Ah, ha, ha, ha. So here are our trebles. Can you see how elongated they are? So you have this long loop here, which is our two loops, and then another two there. Here, these are our half trebles. You can see how they're squashed down together. So there's three. You don't get that extra loop there. But that is your stitch post. And then your stitch head, as I like to call it, is this area that lives to the right-hand side. If you're right-handed, it'll be on the right-hand side. If you're left-handed, because you're going in a different direction, it'll be the opposite side. 
lives on the right side of your stitch. So that stitch head there belongs together. It's right there. And as you can see, there's a little bit of wool. I don't know if you can see it. There's a little bit of wool there, which is the third part of the chain. So if I was to create this shape with my hand, excuse my fingernails. So if you were to create that shape, with, sorry, with my hand, you would see, for instance, that part of my finger is the V shape, okay? And then underneath is this chain here. So basically, a stitch head is made up of three loops. The loops that we see above are the two that live here, that give us the chain. And the third one is just under here. Now, to explain it a little bit better, the quickest thing I can do is show you a chain. So if I just use this colour, if I quickly make some chains, it will make much more sense when I say where that third chain lives. So imagine you, you, your chains are the top of your stitch heads. So you can see what looks like a plait there. If I turn it over, you can see these little chain links here. Okay? Can you see that okay? Probably not. If I get, uh, hang on, let's get my scissors. I'm trying to find tools. So right here is a third loop because I'm looking at the back of my stitch and there's another one here, here and here. So that's the back end of the stitch. And when you go through your stitch head, let's take that off there now, you can see that's the side of the stitches. Hang on, let's get into focus. And you've got this little bump here. And that little bump is where you take your hook through. So if you look at my scissors there, when you're putting your stitch or your crochet hook, you put it into that little space there. And on top sits your two stitch heads, your two um, loops there. So when we're working into a stitch head, that's where we're aiming. But in this situation, we are going to be working between the post. So we're going to create, we're going to take the chain space, which lives in between these here. So I'm going to work straight in between there. I'm going to miss that little loop that you can see there. I'm going to work underneath it. So yarn over into that area and then pull up like so. So if you can see, it's not sitting in the stitch and it's pulled that up because it's working underneath that little bit of wool that you can see just there like so and this will create a slightly different pull on your stitches which actually can act really nicely I actually really like it obviously because I'm using it in my blanket so let's pull this up because you don't want to be getting dizzy watching my hands oh now the dog started <laughs> oh and he started again <laughs> That's my dog having his dinner. He howls. He's a husky. So you just keep working. If you're unsure whether you're going into the right space, start at the bottom, knowing that that's pushing up. If you start near the top end, you're generally going to go for the stitch head. But if you start at the bottom, as if you're pointing towards this area here, you're more than likely going to get it in the right spot. And it creates a whole different vibe to those trebles. And this is what's lovely about knitting and crocheting, is that you can take simple stitches and make them really interesting. So if you're a beginner and you are saying, oh, I could not do those stitches, oh, they're just impossible, no, can't do it. None try to teach me, can't do it, won't ever. Once you break it down to simple stitches, everything, everything is possible, anything. Because it's all based on simple stitches, such as the double crochet, the treble, anything. So, what we need to do now is work um, our magic and create four more rows of this lovely, lovely, lovely um, stitch. Okay. So we've got four more rows to go. We've got 15, 16, 17, and so 
15, 16, 17 and 18, okay? So you always count the row that you're working on. You don't just naturally add it, it has to be. So if it says from 15 to 19 or 15 to 18, then you have to count that as part of your, you know, your make. So, whoops, I went into the stitch head. So that will give you a lovely texture um, that I find really nice. It won't show up in the first, like now, it's not really showing up in this row but it will show up in the multiple rows that you have so it's not something you can just do over two rows you kind of need to see it over you know a good few rows to see the texture so when you look at the, where have I put my blanket? when you look at it here it's got that lovely like knotted feel and it kind of brings out this texture as well here because you're looping around rather than going through so again, it creates a different texture compared to that of um, working through the stitch head. So again, like I say, it's about taking simple things and getting out the best out of them, bringing out the, the texture. If you were working this stitch, for instance, in a chunky yarn, it would work really well. So you don't have to, when you're working on thicker wool, you don't have to, you know, overcomplicate things. The simplest of stitches can look really, really effective. And I am trying my hardest to slow down. So let me go a little bit slower. Okay, corners will still apply and be the same. So it'll be two trebles and then um, two chains and then, sorry, not two trebles. Apologize again. Two half trebles into the corner followed by two chains and then another two half trebles into that same corner space. That won't change, the corners will still stay the same. Okay, let me just have a sneak peek in, just in case I'm talking out of saying it all wrong as usual. No, two, yep, two trebles, two chains, two trebles, two half trebles. Oh my goodness, give me a coffee. Right, I will see you back here shortly on another video um, and this one will be edited for you. So all the notes will be here as well. So don't forget to follow and subscribe to our page and hopefully we will see you on the Cherry Cow group or we will see you enjoying the, um, the blog. <laughs>